1. How do Muslims view death? Muslims believe that the present life is a trial in preparation for the next realm of existence. When a Muslim dies, he or she is washed and wrapped in a clean, white cloth, usually by a family member, and buried after a special prayer, preferably the same day. Muslims consider this a final service that they can do for their relatives and an opportunity to remember that their own existence here on earth is brief. The question of whether there is life after death does not fall under the jurisdiction of science, as science is concerned only with classification and analysis of sense data. Moreover, man has been busy with scientific inquiries and research, in the modern sense of the term, only for the last few centuries, while he has been familiar with the concept of life after death since time immemorial. All the prophets of God called their people to worship God and to believe in life after death. They laid so much emphasis on the belief in life after death that even a slight doubt in it meant denying God and made all other beliefs meaningless. The very fact that all the prophets of God have dealt with this metaphysical question of life after death so confidently and so uniformly, the gap between their ages in some cases, being thousands of years, goes to prove that the source of their knowledge of life after death as proclaimed by them all, was the same, i.e. divine revelation. 2. How do Muslims view death? We also know that these prophets of God were greatly opposed by their people, mainly on the issue of life after death, as their people thought it impossible. But in spite of opposition, the prophets won many sincere followers. The question arises, what made those followers forsake the established beliefs, traditions and customs of their forefathers, notwithstanding the risk of being totally alienated from their own community? The simple answer is, they made use of their faculties of mind and heart and realized the truth. Did they realize the truth through perceptual consciousness? They couldn't, as perceptual experience of life after death is impossible. God has given man besides perceptual consciousness, rational, aesthetic and moral consciousness too. It is this consciousness that guides man regarding realities that cannot be verified through sensory data. That is why all the prophets of God while calling people to believe in God and life after death, appeal to the aesthetic, moral and rational consciousness of man. For example, when the idolaters of Maka denied even the possibility of life after death, the Quran exposed the weakness of their stand by advancing very logical and rational arguments in support of it. And he, i.e. man, presents for us an example, i.e. attempting to establish the finality of death, and forgets his own creation. He says, who will give life to bones while they are disintegrated? Say, he will give them life who produced them the first time and he is, of all creation, knowing. It is, he who made for you from the green tree, fire, and then from it you ignite. Is not he who created the heavens and the earth able to create the likes of them? Yes, it is so, and he is the knowing creator. Quran, 36-78-81. 3. How do Muslims view death? On another occasion, the Quran very clearly says that the disbelievers have no sound basis for their denial of life after death. It is based on pure conjecture. And they say, there is not but our worldly life. We die and live, i.e. some people die and others live, replacing them, and nothing destroys us except time. And they have of that no knowledge, they are only assuming. And when our verses are recited to them as clear evidences, their argument is only that they say, bring back our forefathers, if you should be truthful. Say, God causes you to live, then causes you to die, then he will assemble you for the day of resurrection, about which there is no doubt, but most of the people do not know. Quran, 45-24-26. Surely God will raise all the dead. But God has his own plan of things. A day will come when the whole universe will be destroyed and then the dead will be resurrected to stand before God. That day will be the beginning of a life that will never end, and on that day every person will be rewarded by God according to his or her good or evil deeds. 
the explanation that the Quran gives about the necessity of life after death is what the moral consciousness of man demands. Actually, if there is no life after death, the very belief in God becomes meaningless or even if one believes I in God, it would be an unjust and indifferent God, having once created man and now not being concerned with his fate. 4. How do Muslims view Deet? Surely, God is just. He will punish the tyrants, whose crimes are beyond count, having tortured and killed hundreds or thousands of innocent people, created great corruption in society, enslaved numerous persons to serve their whims, etc., because man has a very short lifespan in this world and because numerous individuals are affected by one's actions, adequate punishments and rewards are not possible in this life. The Quran very emphatically states that the day of judgment must come and that God will decide the fate of each soul according to his or her record of deeds. But those who disbelieve say, the hour, i.e. the day of judgment, will not come to us. Say, yes, by my Lord, it will surely come to you. God is the knower of the unseen. Not absent from him as an atom's weight within the heavens or within the earth or what is smaller than that or greater, except that it is in a clear register, that he may reward those who believe and do righteous deeds. Those will have forgiveness and noble provision. But those who strive against our verses, seeking to cause failure, i.e. to undermine their credibility, for them will be a painful punishment of foul nature. Quran, 34-3-5 The day of resurrection will be the day when God's attributes of justice and mercy will be in full manifestation. God will shower his mercy on those who suffered for his sake in the worldly life, believing that an eternal bliss was awaiting them. But those who abuse the bounties of God, caring nothing for the life to come, will be in the most miserable state. Drawing a comparison between them, the Quran says, Then is he whom we have promised a good promise which he will meet, i.e. obtain, like he for whom we provided enjoyment of worldly life, but then he is, on the day of resurrection, among those presented for punishment hell. Quran, 28-61.